little bit about sets uh, and what their definitions are, some different computations we can perform with them, uh, some of the different notation. Uh, but now I want to talk about one representation that may come in handy for you as a programmer if you're trying to program these sets. Uh, so let's say I'm given the set A, and it's equal to the items um, 0, 1, 2, oh, excuse me, 3, uh, 5, 7, just some numbers. And let's say my universe, which I'm going to draw a uh, big U here for a uh, universe here, is the set equal to uh, the numbers uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, and 7. Okay, so eight total items uh, in my universe. Uh, one way I can represent A uh, as a programmer is using what's called a bit string. That is, every bit corresponds to uh, the number that shows up in the set. So for set A, for example, um, zero shows up, so that would be a one. Uh, and depending on your architecture, um, let's say I've got uh, the least significant digit on the right here, uh, one shows up as well, that's one. There's no two in this set, so that's a zero. Three shows up, so that gets represented here. Four doesn't show up, five shows up, six doesn't show up, but seven shows up. Okay, so this is my uh, bit string here. And the positions uh, of each bit here correspond to each of the elements and whether or not they show up. Now, as you can imagine, I specified how big my universe is, so I could say all of these bit strings are going to be uh, 8 bits, one uh, char if you're using the C language on uh, most architectures. Um, so this is a representation that might come in handy uh, as opposed to using some other data structure that might take up more uh, memory. If I can just get away with just using um, one of these bits and making it a 1 if it's in the set or a 0 if it's not in the set. Okay, so you might see this representation um, somewhere along your career.